Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Stephen's Church uh, online service. Um, it is Mothering Sunday uh, this Sunday, so uh, we will be having um, a, a, a mother's and family's theme. Uh, and our interview uh, this morning will be with uh, Lisa and Sam Roberts uh, talking about their plans for uh, children's and families work once uh, uh, lockdown uh, is over. And uh, regular viewers will know that we're uh, enjoying some Bible project videos at the moment. And we have the next one in the series on heaven and earth coming up later. Um, it wouldn't be a, a church service without notices. Um, and fortunately, there's only uh, one, uh, a couple of notices uh, that uh, just to remind regulars about. Uh, first of all, uh, the CAP course, the CAP money course, is starting uh, tomorrow. Uh, that's Monday. Um, still some time if you're uh, very quick uh, to join uh, that, uh, that, that, that activity. Or if not, please, um, if you could pray uh, for that course's success on a Monday evening, that would be greatly appreciated uh, by Paul Lights and, and Chris Killen as they uh, lead that course. Finally, just a reminder, if you have uh, received the newsletter uh, by email, um, a reminder that there, Madeline has put a request in there um, for your thoughts as to what you would like to do for Easter Sunday. We're really hoping and planning that we can be back in the building uh, to celebrate uh, Easter Sunday, uh, but we'd like uh, to know uh, your thoughts as to uh, the service and as to timings and various other things. So please uh, look at the newsletter and if you could reply by email to Madeline as soon as you possibly can, that would be uh, gratefully appreciated. And you'll be pleased to know that's the end of the notices. So let's uh, just spend a moment uh, in quiet preparing for worship this morning. We meet in the presence of God. Who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Thank you. 
Let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the gods of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Hello. Hi. This week I'm talking with uh, Lisa and Sam. You may remember years ago uh, when we were offered the opportunity to use the chapel, um, Naomi Tuma started um, a, a group for mothers and young children. Oh, actually, um, that's not the case any longer. It's grandmothers and dads and and young children with their carers. And it was very successful on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Uh, it was particularly liked by people who liked a smaller, quieter space. And Lisa, you took that over. Um, and, and then from that, you then developed the parenting course, uh, Kids Matter, and then from that, We've been delivering food parcels to families from Big Nord School and the Free School. So what do you see happening um, through all this? I think it's been a, an amazing opportunity for us to really serve the community that we're, we're in. Um, whenever we make links with parents, there's always... Um, there's that, that coming alongside and walking with them. And sometimes they have times where it's a bit more rocky than normal. Um, and it's our privilege more than anything that we can actually walk with them and help and support them in that way. And that might be uh, for emotional, just wanting someone to talk and think about ideas about how parenting's going. It might be something practical, like actually delivering food parcels in times of needs. Um, but it's just an opportunity for us to serve, uh, serve these families where they are, and where they're at. I, I think the first Christmas at St. Stephen's, you were just very aware that there weren't any children. Mm, Do you very, remember that? Yeah, very much so. It's, it's something that's always been on my heart is about uh, working with families in the community um, and just being there, you know, having that whole thing about church being family and extending that and giving God's love out to those individuals is just so important and is so needed yeah. today in these days. So needed. Yeah. And because of our location, the only real link with, with, with families is, is, is the free school mm -hmm. and, and um, because they're in the parish. But so the chapel was an amazing thing because suddenly we had something to offer as well as having a, a school in the parish yeah and th those links that we've had with the free school have really developed and you know it's it's lovely obviously my background's in education so therefore i've been there um but it's just lovely to be able to to serve them in a way that is really practical and um we've had you know comments coming back from the school that are saying you know this is making making a difference yeah. these parents and they're seeing it in the classroom which is yeah and that's wonderful isn't that wonderful and and of course they they 
promoted the Kids Matters course in, in the school. Yeah. So where did this messy church idea come from? Well, messy church was actually came from um, a Kids Matters parent who wanted to actually extend their understanding, their children's understanding of what church and what God was all about. So it actually wasn't us saying, we're going to do this. This was a parent saying, I really would like my child to learn a little bit more about what Jesus is about, what church is about, what God's about. Um, how, can you, how can you do that? So uh, a messy church is an amazing way of being able to communicate with youngsters and families about God's love. And so that's what uh, Sam and I got together for to do. Great. And, and Sam, you've been running Messy Church for a while. How? Yeah. Where, where uh, have you been doing that? I, I started a Messy Church six years ago at Ipswich Road United Reformed Church. Um, and yeah, it's grown quite a lot from the beginning. And I've learned a lot from it as well. But um, it's good fun. Enjoy. So for those people who don't know what messy church involves, um, what what are <clears throat> the elements that are important and, and how is it church? Um, so there's five values of messy church. Um, the first one is it's Christ centred, which is everything we do is. Um, and then there, it's all age. It's creativity, hospitality and celebration. Um, but like the idea of Messy Church is it brings everyone together um, and you can just be yourself while you're at church. It's great. And the parents stay with the children, don't they? Yeah. So it's, it's, not, it's not like Sunday school used to be. No, it's about being together as a family. And it's, it's not on Sunday, is it generally? No. 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 Not and... And it always involves food. Is that right? Yes. yes. We, it, that's my favourite part, I think. <laughs> Not because it's the food. <laughs> it's the sitting down with people and sharing a meal and having a chat. Um, and people open up while you're eating. Um, yeah, it's really good. And, and so it's, it's very relaxed and very easy for families to come into. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and you can, if you if your child wants to run around um, making noise, then then they can. That's fine. Um, there's no no one there that's going to tell you to be quiet. So no. So what what's the what's the plan for going back into church, Lisa? OK, so the intention is, is that we will start our next uh, messy church on a monthly basis. Uh, and it will be on a Monday evening, and that's going to be starting in the middle of April. Uh, we will be inviting all the parents from uh, Little Fellows and the parents who've done Kids Matters courses, as well as linking up with those families that we've been giving food parcels to and delivering food parcels to since the last lockdown, start of last lockdown. Um, so we're hoping to get lots of lots of youngsters involved, which will be great. Um, yeah, really looking, really, really looking forward to it um, and seeing what happens. And there'll also be, uh, we're, we're planning to run another Kids Matters course at the beginning of April as well. So oh, that's, uh, that's on the horizons. So, so any, anybody who knows any families, any, any families, that, any that, might, families. Uh, that might be interested in Kids Matter um, to get in touch with you uh, and the timing of the messy church on a Monday evening is for after school, isn't it? So, yeah, we, so what we time? Only do straight on, straight after school. So they come straight from school, and then we can feed them, which is great. Yeah, lots, lots of toast. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I imagine you, you people will e email you and and just be encouraged. And we just, I look forward to coming. Am I allowed to come sometimes? Of course you can. <laughs> you can do the messy bit. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. So bless you. Thank you for telling us about it. And so let's uh, pray together. God of love, passionate and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Today's reading is taken from John chapter 19, beginning at verse 25. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there. So he said to his mother, he is your son. Then he said to the disciple, she is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. We don't talk about Mary much at St. Stephen's, and there are historic reasons for that. A lot to do with the history of the church, which I will refer to later. But today on Mothering Sunday, she can, I think, help us think about motherhood. Motherhood is commonplace. Her name, Mary, or Miriam in Hebrew, was a common name. You can see in this passage that I've just read, there were three of them. Motherhood is not guaranteed to all women, women, of course, but it is common. For some, not being a mother is a very painful thing, but for others, they have no desire to be mothers. You don't have to be rich or well-educated to be a mother. It's about biology, not status. Motherhood is common. Motherhood is complex. The name Mary means bitter and beloved. There's a contrast. The relationship between mother and child is, I suggest to you, complicated. It's challenging and rewarding, sometimes pushing mothers to the limits and they find out things about themselves they would much rather know. I know that happened for me. But if you listen to film stars who seem to have everything, talking about their lives, often they will say that the most important time was when they had children. Mary means bitter and beloved. Motherhood is complex. Motherhood is companionable. Mary stands with her son as he undergoes the most humiliating an agonizing death. It's always unnatural when a child dies before a parent. A parent would rather suffer themselves than see their children suffer. Not all mothers can be companionable. Some have to give their babies away. In some cultures, babies are abandoned on rubbish heaps. In our culture, there are stories of mothers who abuse children. But the nature of motherhood revolves around companionability. New mothers wonder if they will do anything else other than care for their newborn. Motherhood is companionable. So, Mary points to the usual things of motherhood, but she also has a unique role to play in the history of the world. As a person without status, wisdom of age and wealth, she is chosen by God. She reverses Eve's distrust of God in her acceptance of the invitation to become the mother of Jesus. 
This was so important in the early church that it became embellished and institutionalized in a slightly strange way in the fifth and sixth centuries. The tradition became that Mary remained a virgin through childbirth and the rest of her life she continued in this virginal state. In our reading today, we hear that Jesus entrusted the care of his mother to his friend, John, suggesting to the biblical scholars of the time that the brothers of Jesus mentioned elsewhere were actually from Joseph's first marriage. We don't know, we haven't got a clue. Whether Jesus was Mary's only son or the eldest of others, what we do know is that there was a strong bond between mother and son. As a, a woman, Mary, who trusted God for our sake, not her own, we see her demonstrate the relationship of mother and child that we hope for. When Mary asked Jesus to help at the wedding when the wine ran out, she demonstrated how very well she knew him. When Jesus refuses to stop teaching to talk to his mother, they demonstrate a relationship that survives adult independence. When Mary stayed close to him, even at the base of the cross, we see the extreme depth of feeling they had for each other. Jesus died on the cross to take the consequences of all imperfect relationships and invites us to be part of the kingdom of God, in which God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit demonstrate peaceful, respectful, perfect relationship. You will see this illustrated, the coincidence of heaven and earth in the Bible Project video today that is achieved by the cross. Mothers really matter. The kingdom of God matters more. We worship a God of infinite love, and that's the theme of our next song.
so let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God raised him on the high and gave him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Loving Lord, this Mothering Sunday, we give you thanks for all who have mothered us, loving, nurturing, and encouraging us. We praise you for all mothers who have laughed and loved and labored as they cared for their children. Loving Lord, we recognize the complexity of motherhood with all of its delights and difficulties we pray for joy in the journey of parenting and for grace and patience to meet the challenges. Thank you that you promise to tenderly lead those who have young. Loving Lord, we remember before you those for whom today is bittersweet or painful those mourning the death of their mother, those who have longed for, but never held their own child, those whose relationship with their mother or with their children is broken. Thank you that you promise to comfort us as a mother comforts her children. Loving Lord, we thank you for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love. We thank you for the faithfulness of Mary, for her reversal of Eve's distrust in you, for her witness and reminder to us of your patient, waiting love. Loving Lord, we thank you for the family of the church into which we are adopted as your children and where we find a true home. May we in turn provide a place of welcome and love for the lonely, the marginalized and the rejected. Merciful and loving Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so let's uh, enjoy uh, our next Bible clip in our series from the Bible Project. This time, it's all about heaven and earth. 
So, in the Bible, the ideas of heaven and earth are ways of talking about God's space and our space. So, I understand our space really well. We live here, there's trees, rivers, mountains. But my understanding of God's space gets a little fuzzy. And what we do get in the Bible are images trying to help us grasp God's space, which is basically inconceivable to us. So, these are two very different types of spaces. Yes, they're, they're different in their nature. But here's what's really interesting is that in the Bible, these are not always separate spaces. So, think of heaven and earth as like different dimensions that can overlap in the same exact space. So, we talk a lot about going to heaven after we die, but this idea of heaven and earth overlapping, we don't talk a lot about that. Which is kind of crazy because the union of heaven and earth is what the story of the Bible is all about. How they were once fully united and then driven apart and about how God is bringing them back together once again. So, let's go back to the beginning where heaven and earth, they're completely overlapping. Yeah, this is what uh, the Bible's description of the Garden of Eden is all about. It's a place where God and humanity dwelt together perfectly, no separation, and, and humans then partner with God in building a flourishing, beautiful world and so on. But as humans, we wanted to do things a different way. We wanted God out and we wanted to create a world apart from him. Yeah, so we have these two spaces now. And the Bible actually uses lots of different kinds of words and phrases to refer to these two spaces to make a, a clear distinction. So, you said that these spaces can overlap though. So, explain how that works. Yeah, this is where we have to start talking about temples. Because in the biblical world, you experience God's presence by going to a temple. That's where heaven and earth uh, overlap. Now, there are two types of temples described in the Bible. One is a tabernacle, basically a tent that was built by Moses. And the other was this massive building made by Solomon. And these temples were decorated with fruit trees and flowers and images of angels and all kinds of gold and jewels and so on. And these are designed to make you feel like you're going back to the garden. And at the center of the temple was a place called the Holy of Holies, which was like the hot spot of God's presence. Now we can go and be with God again. But not so fast because the temple also creates a problem. So, God's space is full of his presence and goodness and justice and beauty, but human space is full of sin and injustice and the ugliness that results. So, how do these spaces overlap if they're so different and they're in conflict with each other? This was resolved through animal sacrifice. Yeah, that's kind of weird. What do animal sacrifices have to do with this? Yeah, the, the idea is this. Animal sacrifices, somehow they absorb the sin when the animal dies in your place. And it creates a clean space, so to speak, where you are now free to enter into the temple and be in God's presence. Okay, so if I'm an Israelite and I live in Jerusalem, I might be able to be in God's presence. But you said the story of the Bible is all of heaven and earth reuniting. Right. So, we have to keep going in the story where we come to Jesus in the New Testament. And in the Gospel of John, we hear this claim that God became human in Jesus and made his dwelling among us. Now, this word dwelling is really curious. It, literally, it means he set up a tabernacle among us. And so, what John is claiming right here is that Jesus is a temple. He is now the place where heaven and earth overlap. What's interesting about Jesus is that he isn't staying in this safe, clean space. He's running around hanging out with sinners. He's healing people of their sicknesses and forgiving people of their sins. He's basically creating little pockets of heaven where people can be in God's presence, but he's doing it out there in the middle of the world of sin and death. And he keeps telling everyone that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he even told his followers to pray regularly that God's kingdom come and that his will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. But a lot of people are threatened by Jesus and they kill him, which seems to spoil this whole plan to reunite heaven and earth. But we, we have to go back to a scene earlier on in Jesus' story where John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, Jesus isn't just talked about as being a temple. He's also talked about as being the temple sacrifice. Yeah, so, so the cross is now the place where Jesus absorbs sin to create a clean space that is not limited like animal sacrifices. Jesus' sacrifice 
has the power to keep spreading and spreading and reuniting more and more of heaven and earth. And this is all really great, but it leaves one big question in my mind, which is, what happens when I die? Don't I just fly over to God's space to be with Jesus? Yeah, so a few times in the New Testament, we learn that Christians will be with Jesus in heaven after they die, but that is not the focus of the Bible's story. The focus is on how heaven and earth are being reunited through Jesus and will be completely brought together one day when he returns. So, in the book of Revelation, we get this beautiful image of the Garden of Eden, now in the form of a city, coming to end the age of sin and death by redeeming all of human history in a renewed creation. And God's space and human space completely overlap once again. And so, at the end of our service, a final blessing. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And may God's blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Dear Lord Jesus, we pray for mummies today and that you would bless them and we say thank you for them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.